I'm getting my hair done. Are you gonna get beads in it? These are beads, beads, beads. Two nuts. Show them what you got. What you got going on, Mom? Twins. Oh yeah. What you got going on? Mom Gray. Black girls are beautiful. Yes. And pose. And pose. And pose. <laughs> My earliest memory of getting my hair done is maybe I was like six or seven. Um, and on Saturdays, my mom, she had this glass beige kind of um, headboard in her room with this big circle mirror. And I would sit in front of her as she twisted my hair. And when I was done getting my hair done, I would turn around, look at the mirror, see how beautiful and cute I looked. And then I'd say, thank you, mommy, and I'd give her a hug. And so he would do my hair, and I remember he would have my hair laying so flat. My relaxers were so fresh every time. He always gave me really good haircuts, and, um, it was nice. I, I loved coming out of the salon feeling beautiful. Invite you. I actually started to learn how to braid because I just wanted to do my own hair. I was tired of other people doing my hair because I thought I was too grown for barrettes. Um, so I started with the Barbie doll heads. I would ask my mom to buy me them and I would like braid, cut, style, you know, everything. It wasn't until I was in high school that I had like a full weave put in with like my leave out and it was really long. I would get like 16 inches, 18 inches and I just felt like I was an R&B singer at the time and I would have these long, you know, the long hair. I would get like the rollers and put rollers in it and do these curls, these big loose curls in my hair and I really loved it. Like I thought I was like a model for some reason. Anyways, uh, look at it. Brown. At night, I just wrapped up the sides of my hair with a hair wrap, and in the morning, I would add a curl or two, and I was done. I still love the convenience of short hair. Like that old saying goes, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. I'm still rocking my short hairstyles. I'm still looking Halle Berry cute. It's the short hair for me. Because my parents were slaves. I think that black womanhood is so beautiful. Um, when I think about the type of, you know, care and love that our hair requires, and same with us, I don't think there's one way to view black womanhood. I think, if anything, um, it just adds to the beautiful complexities of black womanhood. Hey everybody, it's me, Bob the Drag Queen. Okay, I don't have makeup on, so embarrassed. Today I'm doing a um, Sylvester-inspired look. Sylvester started in gospel, but then ended up becoming this like disco queen and I think he was using a lot of his gospel stuff into his disco music. Basically, what I'm going for is the iconic Sylvester blue eyeshadow. I'm gonna give it a bit of a drag edge while keeping it androgynous and go for that uh, signature orange Sylvester hair and a little shoulder pad. So, all right, let's get cracking. Here we go. was Sylvester breaking down gender stereotypes and um, beauty standards. 
he ch like was really changed the game in a lot of ways. Even going to the gay pride parade in a wheelchair while he was dying in the middle of an epidemic, he realized how important it is to like be visible, to be seen, to be out there. And I mean, I, I am willing to acknowledge, I understand that a lot of the freedoms I have today are because of people like Sylvester doing it way before I ever did it. All right, honestly, I think this look is really good. I mean, it's all, I always in the middle of my life, am I going to get it? But I turn it, I always turn it. Listen, y'all, happy Black History Month. And remember, Black is beautiful. And it's mighty real. Ow! The Black LGBTQ community has shifted and continues to shift art, whether it be in fashion, or in music, or in film, or in television. It's changed the way we walk, the way we dance, the way we dress, the way we speak, and reminds us that life is best lived out loud. And who today shows us this more than the powerhouse that's Billy Porter? His role on the hit show Pose, and quite frankly, his role as an American icon has been nothing short of a firework, something for us to look up to and marvel at. But remember, no one just becomes. Before Billy, there was Marsha. In almost every image I've seen of the late Marsha P. Johnson, her smile seems to bully the rest of her face. It's big and toothy, a bright crescent moon beneath two starry eyes. There's always some kind of flowers woven through her hair, or maybe she got on a hat or a scarf. Either way, you see color, you see joy. And that joy, I imagine, was a hard-fought joy. A joy salvaged from the American meat grinder of hate, not just of black people, but also of queer people. So to be black and, in Marsha's case, transgender, was to fight for joy. And fight she did. In the 1960s, queer communities in New York City were being raided by police officers who treated being gay as if it was some kind of criminal activity. Queer folks were being brutalized without consequence, but eventually, like with all bullying, the bullied fought back. We now call this moment the Stonewall Rebellion, named after a bar in Greenwich Village where gay people, many of whom were black, rose up and resisted. The rebellion lasted five days and would be the start of the gay rights movement. That following year, 1970, the first gay pride parade would take place. And that same year, Marsha P. Johnson would create a physical space where young trans people could live proudly, where, where joy wouldn't be plucked out at the moment it broke ground. But what most don't understand, what most don't know, is that for people within the black LGBTQ community, the dance of it all, the drama and shine has always been a fight for joy. Theater of survival, where no one is playing a role. Uh, and one more thing, the category is freedom. As a black gay creator, I create a lot of things, and flowers is one of my main mediums that I use to express myself. We're gonna make some Marsha P headpieces, but I wanted to make them extra fancy because it's Marsha P. I love the way Marsha just like claimed this as her own and really just like, I'm giving myself my own crown and it's gonna be made of flowers. I'm here for it. Do you guys know why she put the P? Marsha P? Pay them no mind. Isn't that good? I love that. We love you, Miss Marsha P. Thank you for being you. Thank you for trailblazing and making a way for me to be who I am today. I think Marsha would be proud of me. What do you think?